Hello, everyone. My name is Michael West, and on behalf of the CMMI Institute, I want to present to you the 2018 Capability Challenge. I also want to present to you this webinar session's uh, speaker and challenger. First, a little bit about me, your moderator. I'm a consultant and author of two books on process and performance improvement. I was the 2017 Capability Counts Conference Chair and one of the challenge judges. And I have the honor of being the 2018 Capability Counts Program Executive and Challenge Moderator. The Capability Challenge Competition showcases thought leaders from around the world who are improving their business performance by building organizational capability. Last year's winner was Prem Ranganath from Kentile's IMS. And Prem, Prem's story won the Capability Challenge by putting forth a compelling story about uh, cultural change tied with technology change, tied with, tied with process improvement to build um, extraordinary capability in Kentile's IMS. Now let me tell you a few things that are different uh, between this year's Capability Challenge and the 2017 Challenge. In 2017, last year, the Capability Challenge, the, uh, the competitors presented live webinars and the audience voted immediately following each round of webinars. The winners of each round of competition and the final winner was selected uh, via a combination of popular audience vote and the vote of three judges. This year in 2018, all challenge presentations are being recorded without a live audience. Once the videos are posted on the CMI Institute website and announced, the community will have a set period of time to view them all and vote for their favorite. Now I'm gonna introduce you to this year's Capability Challenge judges. The three Capability Challenge finalists will be chosen via a combination of audience votes and the judges vote. The three finalists will compete against each other in the final round live at the Capability Counts 2018 conference. And at the end of today's webinar, I have some more information for you about the Capability Counts Conference. Our first judge this year is Becky Fitzgerald. Becky is this year's Capability Counts Conference Chair. She has extensive experience in healthcare, co corporate consulting, and academic environments. Becky is a certified CMMI lead appraiser and enterprise data management expert with expertise in laboratory regulations, insurance and government reimbursement rules, code and data set management, and transaction requirements. Becky has consulted with organizations globally in technology forecasting and adoption, workflows, value streams and operations, and business performance evolution. Our second judge is Michael Callahan. Michael Callahan is the president of Aegis.net Inc. and he was the winner of the very first Capability Challenge competition in 2016. He has served as sponsor of Aegis 3 Scampi appraisal since 2009. His hands-on approach to company, his company's process improvement initiatives was central to his winning the 2016 Capability Challenge. He's looking forward to applying the perspective of a successful appraisal sponsor to this year's entries, but most of all, to hearing more great stories of process improvement through CMMI adoption. And our third judge this year is Prem Ranganath. As I mentioned earlier, Prem was the 2017 Capability Challenge winner. Prem is currently VP of Quality at Trilliant Networks in this role. He is responsible for developing and implementing a comprehensive quality strategy for product engineering, covering people, process, tools, and enabling culture. He provides assurances that execution of the strategy leads to outcomes and unique experiences that support the customer's journey maps for smart grid, smart city, and Internet of Things applications. The panel of Capability Challenge judges will use criteria to, to judge the challenge presentations. The criteria are originality and innovativeness, credibility, value to conference attendees, presenters' qualities and presentation skills, and measured success from CMMI adoption. The judges 
have been provided detailed definitions for these judging criteria, none of the three capability challenge judges have a relationship, either personal or professional, with any of the 2018 challenge competitors. And now I'm going to introduce you to today's webinar presenter and challenger, Mr. Wael Phillips. Wael Phillips is a Quality Assurance and Process Improvement Manager with 20 years of management and software engineering experience. He is one of the very few experts in his field in the MENA region. He has knowledge of quality assurance activities, including audits, recommending and implementing corrective actions, providing accurate documentation of statistical reports, and ensuring overall compliance. He has demonstrated excellence in communication skills with various levels of management, regulators, board members, and suppliers. He heads a number of committees. These include the SCPG, risk committees, and others, in addition to managing customer satisfaction. And with that, I will turn it to, over to Mr. Well Phillips. Well, please tell us your 2018 Capability Challenge story. Thanks. Thanks, Michael. I will take it from there. Uh, we will start with um, a brief about uh, ITS. As uh, Michael said, I'm, I'm leading uh, the Quality Assurance and Risk Management within ITS for uh, the past five years. Um, ITS is a leading uh, integrated solution provider in the banking domain, mainly we are focused on the banking industry. We have about 1,100 professionals. We have about 350 customers over 24 nations, and uh, these customers are across of seven countries. Uh, these are regional offices that's taking care about uh, the sales process and uh, customer support. Uh, our story right now is, um, we'll focus on a success story that have been made by ITS and uh, the baseline, the last report uh, that issued in 2016 have highlighting high variability of effort variance, customer complaints from meeting the deadlines and high variability in cost variance. And using the CAR tools and statistical control and dig down to uh, more than 20 projects, we are able to identify uh, some root causes like understanding the business requirement was uh, a big issue in some projects, variability in the estimation process, and this is, was another big, big issues, and variability in the skills of the team itself from very high skill team to a low skill team. Identifying the integration requirements at the early stages was also one of the problem managing that say that changes itself during the projects was taking the projects and delaying the projects and measuring the productivity was the big question mark uh, we see after uh, the reviewing those uh, uh, root causes in the SBG that measuring the productivity if we are able to measure the velocity or the productivity we will be able to tackling all the above issues because productivity itself will reflect the skill level will reflect the um, estimation process the capability of the team to develop on time and the skill level as well of the team so how we can measuring the productivity without having a software size so we have to have a software size since we already moved to agile we were early we are using a function point but unfortunately it, it went to um, a wrong uh, way of implementation we move uh, to agile and we have been chosen to uh, the story point to be one of the uh, techniques to be used okay is, is okay uh, the next slide is showing exactly the changes that made by ITS on three dimensions uh, for the structure level we have this is what I'm recommending by me that we have to have a dedicated team looking after the estimation process looking for the integrity of the planning process and estimation process looking after the uh, clarity of the requirement itself that it's coming by our specials from the customer side on the process level of course as i said we have been selected the story points to be used as the main uh, technique for estimation uh, we create a reference table because story point as we all know that it's using a poker techniques and needs some certain of controls to see the variability of the story point itself because it's relative estimation so you need you create your reference table and this is the cornerstone or to have a clear-cut implementation of the story point 
once you will build a clear cut of this reference table that will be used by our estimators later on to correlate the requirements is coming from the customers slicing the requirements and correlate these to the, the exact reference table it gives you the exact size which is give leverage the integrity of uh, performing the estimation process itself in addition to that we are measuring the standard deviation of the sizing itself and we will see uh, the variability looking for the variability of the standard deviations and how we are squeezing this standard deviation step by step. Of course, slanting the requirements is a technique that uh, will help the organization doing um, uh, apple to apple comparison for the reference table because you cannot compare it to compare all the requirements uh, in the, on the same um, uh, packet. You have to do some slicing and to a bucketization of the requirement to the suitable backup bucket as per the uh, reference table I explained before. It will add also another uh, challenge to measure the velocity of uh, the, uh, the different teams that are going to implement the story point and looking for the velocity standard deviation and velocity mean. And again, focus on variation root cause analysis need to be tackled immediately in any uh, weird or any uh, data points that uh, get outside of the control charts that have a higher variability from uh, different size we are using uh, here uh, the westinghouse uh, testing um, technique the 84.1 uh, techniques for uh, statistical test on the tool level, and I see this is the most empowered and uh, good implementation uh, that uh, leverage, again, the data integrity of the data, <coughs> we build the DevOps using the DevOps to have uh, inject a more control level on the development level, on the team level, to control the data entry, the number of defects, the effort to spend, blah, blah, blah. Uh, in addition, continuous collaboration and feedback to the project management. We have been created the data management team. ITS is a CMMI level five. So uh, data management team is a core function within the organization looking for the data integrity and immediately report uh, this calibration to the project management for taking corrective or preventive actions. I'm just sharing a table showing certain um, uh, user stores and estimation and uh, showing how uh, we are, uh, the variability is really controlled by the effort variance and the velocity. I am glad to share that, that currently ITS, the overall velocity uh, mean is uh, 0.044. The overall velocity standard deviation is 0.066, which is uh, very, very stable uh, so far to be used on the estimation process for the future projects. Next, please. Okay, in this slide, I'm just showing the results of uh, the implementation of the story point and how the story points uh, statistical control leverage the capability of uh, the effort variance as a, as a sub process of the organization. Uh, in 2016, it shows uh, the mean is, is talking about minus four something and currently it has been improved to uh, point oh, oh point 0.10 right and and the standard deviation is 31 and improved to 14 and the beauty now the probability of success that measuring the success of the organization to meet the organizational goal which is represented here in the usl and the sll is improved from 36 to 66. Currently, my team is looking for a prediction model that uh, using uh, these robust data to create a prediction model for estimation, which will make the estimation process faster and faster. In conclusion, significantly, uh, I'm showing uh, an F-test technique that uh, showing significantly improvement for the standard deviation. So I can, uh, it's, it's very clear that 2017 baseline it's showing big improvements from 2016 baseline. And uh, in addition to that, um, that measuring the velocity itself 
uh, leverage the team, um, what we call it, appetite to initiate uh, process improvement proposals to improve because currently we are looking for the velocity for each team. Now we have high performer team and we have low performer team. Now we can share the practices. We can leverage the low performer to be compared to the high performer, even the high performer to be appreciated by the company. Okay. Uh, at the end, I, uh, I would like to say that from 2016, the company were achieving losses. Currently, we are achieving a good uh, a profit, net profit by, two, by the end of 2017. Thanks. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Well, That was an excellent presentation. Um, I don't have any questions for you today. I do want to remind our listening audience and our viewing audience about the Capability Counts 2018 conference. I do encourage everyone to please join us at the Capability Counts Conference, May 1st and 2nd in Reston, Virginia, for the Capability Challenge Finals. In addition to the Challenge Finals, this conference offers all attendees the best experience in the world in terms of getting information on process and performance improvement and building capability. You'll have the chance to attend dozens of presentations in which you'll gain practical, pragmatic, uh, information that you can take home to your home organizations and implement and build capability in your organization. So please go out to the CMMI Institute's website and register for the conference. And with that, I will conclude today's 2018 Capability Challenge webinar. <laughs>